So that's generally how you want it to go if you really want to climb. So if you play too much shit, you're not going to climb. You will learn. You will learn faster, but you will not climb. Your general skill is not equal to, uh, to solo queue rating. People really confuse that very often. People think, oh, I have higher skill, which means I have to have higher rating. It's actually not even close to the truth. Because very often, let's imagine two players. One player plays every single champion, just on, on rotation, tries to play every single champion. But one dude plays the same amount of games on one champion. The guy with the one champ will be higher elo, but the other guy will have more knowledge at the end of the day because he experienced more, okay? He experienced every aspect of the game. So this is a long-term strategy. Uh, by playing all champs, you're playing the meta game. You're playing the meta game, trying to get good at, the, the, at getting good, you know? It's a meta good. While the guy is just on playing one champ, specializing in one, trying to master that and be really good at. That's also a difference between a one trick and a main, and a lot of people don't understand that. When I tell I'm a main, I'm not a one trick. It's a, it's a very mis big mis misconception. People will look at this and they're gonna be like, 300 games, you're a one trick. Uh, no, because I play competitive. I've played all champs. I know how champs work, okay? I've played all of them. And if I don't understand a champ, what do I do? I play it. And that's what you want to do. If you're really struggling versus a champion, you want to play that champion because you will get the insight of the weaknesses of that character. So that's the basic difference of a main and a one trick. A main will always be better than a one trick, even though he plays less of that specific champion. Okay. If someone plays only Velkas, he will never be able to surpass me. Never. If he doesn't experience other champs, because I'll just be rapidly um, expanding my knowledge pool. Because I know more other champs. That's the difference, you know? You can't ever peek at a champion if you only play that champ. In order to be a better Velkas player, you have to not, sometimes not play Velkas. Um, so yeah, that's that's about the meta knowledge. So first thing first, you gotta you gotta set your like ideas in order here. Like what do you wanna achieve? I'm guessing you wanna get gold, that's your first thing. Now, I see a lot of errors since you seem to be doing all right on Varus. He's probably your best champion. Um, the, the win rates are relevant here. I can't really judge much from win rates because you have very few amount of games, you know? So I can just look by general KDAs, although this can also be luck. Just looking at KDAs and I can say like, okay, maybe you're decent at positioning. While in bruisers, you're kind of flipping it. And maybe, it's not many games to, to decide, you know? Like you're silver and you buy control wars. That's amazing. Good shit, you know? Um, it's just very, very, um, it's very difficult to judge, but we're going to watch a game and, and see what we can work on. But uh, it seems like positioning might be your biggest strength, which means, uh, again, AD carry is good. Like what I, what I suggest people when they climb, here's a good thing to do. Um, have two champs viable for every role, but have preference. It's not like I, I'm going to play 10 champs, two for every role and I'll just play them like equally. That's not how it works. You have your preference and you will always play that preference unless something is stopping you, either picked or banned or horribly countered, okay? So also the champs can overlap. You can learn various mid lane, various AD carry. So you don't have to learn insane amount of champs. You can play with like five champs to cover every single role. So you're just not a dumbass, okay? You don't wanna be a guy who gets autofill and makes his team wanna puke. You don't want to be that guy. You want to understand how every role plays and you want to know how to deal with it. Okay, your Jin Varus are decent. You're good at top, top lane. You're not good at the attack speed based AD carries. Which begs the question, why don't you play mages? Why don't you try mages? If you're good at positioning in Varus and Jin, you should be good at mages immediately. Which mages do you think are good to OTP? I like Malzhar, that's not good. TF is good. Victor is good. Oriana is good, yeah. Uh, don't really mean Malzhar. Although Malzhar is a good way to learn macro. Because the only way you're going to climb with Malzahar is by understanding macro. Malzahar is like a elo deflation character. He's a macro learner, much like Velikus. And if you climb with that, that means you're getting good at macro. So it's a kind of good boot camp for that. I play Velikus a lot. I just don't know which mages are good at Mono. Oriana is you. Oriana is good right now. Uh, right now, the mages, you have Seraphine. You have Anivia. You have Victor. Well, Anivia fell off. She's no longer that good. It's Oriana. Oriana, Victor, and Seraphine. 
and Zoe if you count that uh, mage, which is disgusting. <coughs> is it good to climb? Yes, Victor is pretty solid to climb. Um, the benefits of Victor are you never lose. Even if you play like shit, you can always wave clear the wave with just one E. You will always have decent farm, you will always have decent damage. Victor is just made to never lose, but you can win if you play well. So he's he's very reasonable. Um, you wanna hop in a call? If you have a microphone, we can hop in a call. So yeah, let's do this. You got any questions? Because I see you typing a lot. You're really uh, enthusiastic. I love it. Yeah, I just really want to climb because I'm even struggling in silver, so that's kind of frustrating. Okay. I don't think you're struggling because you play like 30, 40 games. That's nothing. You have 57% win rate like on, on 40 games. That's pretty solid, actually. That's not struggling. And uh, your, your champs are not very optimized. You're just picking random shit. Yeah, like I said, when I get frustrated or like I have a bad game or a bad few games okay. and I just switch role basically not just champion even entirely I switch role okay so yeah you just want to wash it away so th didn't we start with that question you asked me like what I do when I get a lose streak right yeah yeah um here's the the secret of optimal climbing and when I was trying to go pro uh like you would you would really want to maximize your win rate because uh back in the day Solky meant something being good in Solky actually meant you were good at game um, back in like season five and before. So what you want to do is you want to, you're not a good player seven games in a row. You're not, you, you're like, your brain is not that good enough. Like you're not strong that, that much. Your brain will melt and you will not try after like fourth game. So you, you really want to, you want to get into a mentality of playing as well as possible. You want to be in that stressful tournament mode, I don't know if you ever play tournaments or on stage or try to play like high stakes game, uh, it, it's, you get into this zone state of mind where you're just extremely, uh, how do you say that? Like when you pay attention to everything, you're, you're in yeah. the zone and you want to do that and however long you can manage it. Like if you haven't played it very often like that, uh, you, you can maybe manage that for one or two games. And then you take a break, five minutes maybe. And then you do it again. And just, you gotta find your speech, but everyone's different how much you, you can remain there, you know? Like, I can I can maybe try hard, like, at the moment, maybe like four games of pure try hard, and like, my brain's just gonna go into overdrive and get sick of it. Even if you win the games? Uh, yeah. You're not, it's good to be on a win streak high, but it's also not good to be like in a not giving it your best mood. Yeah. And win str uh, lose streaks are inevitable. Like you, you can play perfect, you're gonna lose five games in a row. That's just how stats work. So when that shit happens, you might even say to yourself, oh, I'm not tilted, it's fine. I lost four games in a row and I played really well, I'm not tilted. Uh, don't go for fifth. Because you're probably not fine, even though you think you're fine. Like, yeah, because uh, unconsciously, you're yeah, just gonna yeah, yeah, play exactly. words. Yeah. Very often, subconsciously, you're just gonna kill yourself. And you're, you're not gonna really try hard. You, you'll feel like the game deserves you. Like, the game owes you one. The game owes you a payback for all the shit games you had. So when someone makes a mistake in a fifth game, after you lost four in a row, you'll be like, okay, why me? Why am I this unlucky? I'm getting a shit player in a fifth game losing, you know? Yeah, yeah. So that's just like your brain will inevitably go into that mode. So the best thing you can do is take a break, go like do push-ups, jerk off, like go watch a TV show, 20 minutes. Like 15, 20 minutes break is, a, is amazing for that. <clears throat> so that's the best thing you can do when you're in a lose streak. Not swapping roles, not swapping champions randomly, you know? That's uh, not a good way to climb. Well, I was also going to ask, uh, since I said, uh, since you also mentioned, maybe my positioning is my strength. Yeah. Uh, do you think uh, in my elo, which is really low, is it would it be best to queue primary role ADC and secondary mid or the other way around? Hmm. If you're gonna play something like Victor, I'd say you're probably gonna have more impact on bot lane AD carry. 
Because Victor is good. He's a very stable pick, but he's not a high impact character. You're not really going to break the game early. Whereas bot lane, if you're really good, you can kind of in the 2v2 trades early, get that advantage, kill the jungler, bait him or whatever. Like if, you, if you're smurfing, you can just climb with anything basically. It's irrelevant. Yeah. But you're yeah. trying to maximize your stuff and I'd say you go AD carry then mid. And because you understand top lane that's also good for you, you'll be better at positioning and you can also default for that on the autofill. Yeah, I used to play top lane a lot. I main Shen for quite a, quite a while. Okay. But Shen and low elo isn't really a good call because low yeah. elo people, when I ult them, they just walk away. They're going to run away always, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. But also, since I my only comfortable picks as AD carry is our Jin and as of lately Pharos for a bit. I mean, should okay. I expand? Considering um, I said uh, I'm not into attack speed, AD carries. Two picks are fine for a roll. You can play more, but two picks are all right. Wait, I'm gonna try to share the screen here so you can. Watch without delay. Okay. Let's see if this works. Okay. The league is being recorded. If it lags, tell me. No, no it looks I really good. Do this looks for fine. stream. Okay. Well, I'm double streaming it. <clears throat> and when I play mid lane, uh, lately I enjoy. Galio, but I don't know if he's viable. He's not that good right now. I think I put him as B tier in my tier list. He's really not that great. He's also a roamer, which is not really strong right now, so he kind of plays for his team fully. Yeah. Um. Okay, so here we got the classic aggro bot lane with a scaling bot lane. So, like, you guys have a better comp. Yeah, you guys clearly have a better comp. Like, their, their champs are trash here. Uh, but the issue is the way to lose this is to play aggressive early. Like, the best way to lose this is to fight early. So you gotta really pay attention to early uh, Draven, Leona, all-ins. You and Rakan have to play elusive and clean, but if, if you poke them out with the nice old chain CC, you can win. But before ult, you don't really fight. I mean, this game wasn't really a good one, uh, I think. Uh, half, half of my team, including me, gave up halfway <laughs> and then tried to pick back up and then it ended badly. Okay, okay, we'll, 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 we'll see it. So I decided to go cleanse here, considering uh, Leona and Ari. Yeah, Ari, eh. I don't, versus Ari, it's alright, I guess, but... Yeah, cleanse oh, versus uh, Leona is fine. Originally, I thought it was going to be Vayne ADC until I saw Draven. Yeah, that so makes I it be worse. Vay Vayne and Leona would have been good to have cleanse. Yeah, I guess, to avoid the full change CC. Yeah, good reasoning. I like it. <clears throat> okay, a reasonable runes. You let him push here. This is where you want to let him push. If you can, because the level 2 will go aggro. Like, the bot lane is that you either rush the level 2 or if you can't really match it. You'll, you'll let him push, so just so they can't you can't get frozen. Here you shouldn't be auto attacking that minion. But yeah, it's good. They're not gonna freeze. But you put a little bit more fire on the minion, so that makes you come closer. Yeah, that trade has to be lost. But it's fine. Oh, you shouldn't go this deep. It's fine. Okay. As long as you don't trade. Yeah, Rakan went way too aggressive here. You played it well. It's alright, I guess. Yeah, Rakan played it like shit. Ah, uh, you can you can actually uh, leave this wave. Could I not push it when they? Uh, you can push it, but you can also recall either way. I think recalling might have been slightly better because you're gonna create a, a freeze. Because you're not really gonna buy an extra item. Yeah, you would get like a blade. That's it. Yeah. And look at what happens now, because the wave is so thick and it was pushing towards you, it takes you so long to clear it. So now you're gonna either have to leave it frozen, or you're gonna fight these guys, you know? Because they're not gonna let you 
They're not gonna let you break this. Okay. Leona did a cheeky thing. You have to hard shove this fast. Okay, now you can recall. Okay, what is this? Are we fighting? You got a lot of minions, but you can't really. Uh, they're never gonna let you kill. You need to make this. Uh, this is this is how you. Do you know what the cheat or recall is? No. Okay. Uh, you'll hear that probably. You you you'll hear that term very often. And how it's done is basically you set up like a slow push into a second wave and then you crash two waves or three waves, generally with a cannon. This here, what you've done, this it could be like a semi cheater basically. Um, the whole purpose is to make enemies overwhelmed by minions, so they have to stay to clear them while you get a recall. Yeah. yeah. And it's called a cheater recall because you lose nothing for it. Because by the time they clear that, those two thick waves, three, uh, by the time they clear it, you're going to come back. And you're just going to continue on, on, on the third wave. Yeah. So you generally don't lose anything and you use money. So here the issue is you're sitting on 800 gold. Well, this guy has two long swords. So you want to recall. If you stay, you're in a disadvantageous position. That's why you wanted a recall in that wave. You either leave it frozen recall or you hard shove it and recall. Both good choices. Now, not only do you can't, you can't fight because you're lane disadvantage because they're like all in comp while you're a bit more poke but you also can't fight because you're down 800 gold like 800 gold right now is like almost entire advantage they have yeah so it's just it, this, it comes down to efficient gold people are very bad at recalls in, in solo queue and gold efficiency is something no one pays attention to rarely like sadly Gold efficiency is big. Like, you can get ahead without being ahead. As long as you can manage your gold efficiency. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, now you don't step outside. You stepped outside for no reason. You wanna... That's a good cleanse. Like, okay. Like, why were you out in this wave here? Uh, okay, let's... Why did I stayed, you mean? Why, did, why were you in the wave? Okay, like, look at this situation here. When, when Leona goes goes deep, why are you in the wave here? Like, why are you going back into the wave? Uh, good question. To take the CS that was low, I suppose. Okay, um, what are these abilities here? <laughs> yeah. Either of these can clear. Can get that one minion. And yeah. that's probably the only minion that's gonna be under fire. Because what's happening here is a slow push for enemies. And this is gonna push inevitably to you, whether they want it or not. This is an unfreezable situation. Nor it's a neutral one, so it's gonna contest you and make you lose minions. It's literally gonna push towards you, because they have way more minions. So these are the worst waves to, to, to die on. Because, okay. Um, this, this is like the worst mistake you can make in low reload, and people tend to make this all the time, trust me, in like diamond. Um, so what happens is they, they stack a huge wave and it's a slow push. So there's literally no reason to go outside the turret because they're going to look to fight you. They have so many advantages in this situation. You get baited by the minions dying. They have a thick wave. So if you fight, even if there's, even if you guys are equal, they get slight wave advantage because they have more minions attacking you. People don't calculate the minion damage. And the worst of all is if you die in this such a wave, you're gonna lose a lot of minions because it's a big wave. So that's kind of the... You never want to be in, in, in these types of scenarios. Because yeah, look, it's inevitably gonna clear, it's gonna come to you. So you will absorb it no matter what. You're not gonna lose any minions by staying behind. You know, there are situations where you're getting frozen, it's very difficult. But in this case, it's just... The wave is gonna come to you no matter what. And here, you want to keep it here. Because you don't want to get past this line. If you go behind the line, you, they can all in you. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, this is just some basic wave management. On how to like... Just minimize your... Your mistakes. Because League of Legends is not about making uh, big plays. It's just about... It's like chess. It's about which player makes a mistake. It's not about who makes a big play. 
So if you're very consistent, you're better. You're climbing. You just have to know your shit. If you know everything, theoretically, you can't ever make a mistake. Provided you're mechanical god, you know? So yeah. Just know everything, predict everything, never make a mistake. Simple as that. And you win every game. Well, every game you can. It's a bit of a tall order, but... You wanna, you wanna strive towards it, you know? Yeah. Okay, this is good. You guys are keeping like here, like they can't really engage you because you're keeping a wave at a at a permanent state where it's in a permanent slow push towards you. Like you're you're trimming the wave while letting it slow push towards you. So now you're 47 CS and 30, 38 on them. Like they're not really abusing you guys at all. So this is this is really good. This is I'm assuming it's your natural instinct instinct to kind of keep it here and like you're doing this maybe subconsciously. You just feel naturally safe in that spot, you know? See, this wave you could have frozen again. And just keep it in the same state, you know? This wave yeah. could be pulled to the side, frozen, especially because you got a jungler. So if they try to break the freeze, they go all in, you fight him. Now he's gonna slowly bounce to them, so it's a bit... It's a bit iffy, you know? They, they have all kinds of tricks in play. Okay. Finally get a recall. That's a lot of money. Okay. Yeah, this is spicy. Yeah, here I made a huge mistake. I thought they were recalling as well. Well, yeah, that, so those I... are the tricks that are enabled. So I just wanted to push Ooh, the wave and then recall. Yeah, um... Yeah, I get what you wanted to do. Uh, it even makes sense to an extent because what happened here was the wave clump. Because the, your minions focus this minion, the wave clumped. And when wave does this, it's gonna have better focus. So when the next one crashes, all of your minions are gonna be focusing the first guy. Well, these guys will spread out. So your wave will inevitably win. Also, not to mention it's, it's closer. The middle ground is closer to your side, which means wave B comes faster. So th this is just how you create a slow push by doing this clump thing. Um, not to make it like too much on wave oriented and like to drag on with this, cause it, it's a bit, it, I mean, it can be overwhelming, you know. Now your idea is just to, uh, to minimize your mistakes. Um, in this case, if you want to push this, you call your support. You call your support or even jungler was there. You could have maybe like ping him in a potential gank, you know, kind of like. Oh, come here. It's a gank, but secretly you just want to push the wave, you know. Yeah. It's a, it's a good thing to do with junglers. Or you could have just recall because they're not going to freeze this and people are stupid at this elo. So it's actually, it's actually not like... Devastating if you just recall here. And yeah, if you do this, if you do these greedy uh, shoves, you always do them in a mind, like in, with the idea in your mind that they're there waiting. You know, it's like a boogeyman in a closet. Yeah. You imagine the worst position they can be in and you just think, okay, they're there, 90%. I'll respect that position. Uh, so yeah, that's unnecessary death. If you had cleanse, you would have probably lived that. So this death stems from the earlier mistake as well. So it's kind of like a cascading mistake, you know? Yeah. So that's a bit sad. And now Draven is going to shove this out and reset, I imagine. And when he resets, he's going to have another goal advantage. Whereas if you did a cheater recall, you would have been dead equal in, in the gold, in gold efficiency. Okay, dirt, long swords, yeah, lethality verse. This seems all right. You only have two tanks, and you can, if you if you hit the squishies, it's gonna be kind of worth for you, I guess. Yeah, reasonable choice in the in the build. Good farm. They stayed. They're trolling here. Um, you don't have a jungler, so you can't really contest. But they stayed, so it, that means you just push. You don't really contest this, you can't do shit. I tried to steal it there. Yeah, I, I, I get it. It's just such a low percent chance. It's just better to shove out. Yeah. Because you create prio. If you have a jungler, you can do that. Now what happens now you didn't really shove it out in time. Because what... Again, this is again wave management. We're going too much in wave management, but it's kind of boring. There's not much I can uh, commentate on. 
Um, basically, you could have shoved him before and the way would bounce off the third. So then it would be the... It would be ball on their court. They would have to decide what to do. Do they let it freeze for you or do they re or do they fight it with no mana, low HP and 2000 gold in, in inventory, not, not used. So either way it's good for you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, now I ideally want to fight, provided jungler is not there. And okay, this can actually kinda work. Good response. Kill, kill, kill. Uh, should have killed one very easily. Yeah, that definitely that play could have definitely worked. Like he kind of panicked, popped up both abilities. Um, yeah, that was just an easy kill. Ah, uh, you guys are winning in this scenario. You guys are literally winning here. You just instantly flash all the first one, and they get looted and strained. So. Yeah, that was just a fairly simple. It's just execution mistake. That was a free play. Yeah, I think I just panicked there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if you do this a lot, but if you panic a lot, um, there is a fix for it. And if you're a positional player, which in this case you have to be because you're playing Varus, if you play mages like that. Um, again, another chess analogy. Most of the plays that happen uh, should have already happened in your head. Okay. Uh, not much that's happening on the game should surprise you. Yeah. Uh, you get what I mean? Um, like, before I... Very often on, on stream, when I make a combo on Velkus, I'll, I'll even announce it to you guys, vocally. I'll even tell you what I'm going to do. Very often, like, 30 seconds before. Because I'm playing in mind that I'm, that's going to happen. Because I, I envision a play. What I mean by that is, is you, you, think, you think a play through... Like, you envision it, and then you put it into action if you can. Same as, like, here. You have to think about everything that can kill you and how. Like, okay, do, does Leona have flash? Yes. Okay, so she can potentially flash. If she flashes, what is my play? I just cleanse, ult, move away. If necessary, I flash. You know? Those are kind of, like, protocols of safety. And in every game, you want to know who can kill you and how. In this game, I'd say two deadliest characters for you, Ari, Leona. And you have cleanse to deal with them, and... Ari will fall off, she's gonna be crap later on. She won't be able to penetrate through your team, so... Leona is the only real threat mid to late game. So yeah, like, if you can keep track of positioning of Leona and, like, what she can do and when, you're kinda golden. So yeah, good way to not get scared, where I was going with that point, is a good way to not get scared is just to... kinda keep tabs open in your head, like, what can happen. Yeah. And that, it, it's not an easy thing. It takes a lot of practice, but yeah, I mean that's how you that's how you become a better player by knowing more, by knowing more potential futures that can happen. Okay, that's a shove recall, good play. I'm gonna get boot soon. Yep, eleven. Good stuff, Rakan roams exactly as you should this wave, you want to catch and freeze if possible, but they probably won't allow you anyway, so whatever, you just catch it and farm. If they stay, again, you wait for ult and fight. Because this is what Solk is, it's, it, it consists of states, either equal, new, like uh, neutral, ahead or behind. And if he stays, you guys are ahead. But if you're equals, they are ahead. Like, it just yeah. comes down to these situations. And they let you freeze it. And now this is a freeze. This is a free freeze that they let you do. And where you punish them. You kind of broke the freeze. Which is a bit sad. You could have just denied him like 12 minions off of that. And that'd be horrible for Draven. Yeah, you understand how freezing works? Uh, kind of, I think. Uh, mostly okay. when I play top lane, uh, when we talk about wave management, in most cases in top lane, I just... Uh, okay. I don't yeah. know if that's called freezing. I just last hit the minions in most cases. Okay, yeah, last hitting minions. Yeah, this, it's a very common knowledge in top lane because top lane is uh, the most punishing lane of all. If you yeah. fall behind in top lane, you're done. It's so long. And it's very punishing because like most top laners have good all in. So if you're a Relia in your head, you always want to freeze. And when they come for wave, you just all in them. 
And it's like a classic thing you do. Now here, this is a safety freeze. Uh, because enemies left the wave in a shit position, because Javen wanted to brute force a recall. He obviously wants to recall to get advantage. Now, he he left in a shit position. So if you heal here only last hit, what's going to happen is the wave is going to stay here and push towards you slowly. So that means yeah. your enemy minions, because it's more of them, it's a freeze, uh, it's going to kill more of your minions, okay? So by the time Draven gets here, this entire wave will be dead. If you only last it here. Even earlier, because you kind of killed two minions here. Um, so if you only last it, this entire wave is dead, and you're in a safe position to farm. You're ahead one wave. Okay, whereas if you do this push, if you just auto attack and drop E and all that, and you push then the wave... Okay, what happens is you're in this position. Not only is this a risky position for you guys, because Draven is coming with an item, but all these minions, all of these minions, you guys cultivate it. You save them for him. Okay? Yeah. So Draven doesn't miss this cannon, doesn't miss other three minions. So that's the difference in the play. He, You didn't punish the freeze because he gets more and the wave is going to bounce and now you're just going to have to contest with him. What I had in mind here, uh, which is most likely wrong, is uh, I pushed the wave since Draven recalled. Okay. And then by the time he's back, the wave will be under his turret. And even though he will be back, Draven doesn't really have a wave clear ability, so I thought... Okay, reasonable. Yeah, turret. that's a good idea. Like, if you had a nice good item to buy, it would be fine. Tear is a... Well, it's alright, but it doesn't give you any power. It's not like you gained anything from it. I'd always value freeze there until you get, like, a full item. You know? If you had, like, a mythic combined, hard shove, kind of go back. Should, should be alright. But yeah, that's fine. Um, that looks good. That looks good. There's the old. There it is. Um, okay, wait. What happened here? How do we not kill anyone? That was kind of insane. With the yeah, uh, I guess we should have killed Leona. Um, they did a. It's a tricky positioning. Uh, they did a switcheroo there. Draven flashed out while Leona picked up your ult. She blocked it. Yeah. So I guess you, should, you were just supposed to execute her to get the one, one for one. Yeah, that's very sad. Uh, a very unfortunate situation, actually. Leona kind of picks it up. Very rare scenario. Whatever, you guys can still fight. Yeah, Rakan knows it, but he does it in the most obvious manner, and now you're not in range. Yeah, that's awkward. If you were closer for that play, or if he just waited for you both ways, it would work. So yeah, that's sad. Now it's kind of that engage potential is wasted. Yeah. This Rakan is a bit garbage, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. <laughs> He has no clue what is he doing. Uh, oh man. Okay, you had a couple of mistakes here. And I, I'm assuming this is tilt, yeah? Oh boy. <laughs> okay, so this game is done, right? Yeah, basically, because the uh, mid game was pretty trash. Now. This is why this is why I want you to take breaks if you get into bad streaks because what what giving it your all means the, the thing we talked about earlier and that's why you can only do a couple of them at a time which means is if you're playing 3v5 two guys AFK in base you want to play it out to the best of your abilities okay what can I do to win this 3v5 you know it's a foolish thing to do but it, it helps you it helps you in the meta game get better in the long term it also sometimes you will actually win games. You will win 4v5 games. It happens. It happens in solo can thing happens. So not only are you gonna slightly, ever so slightly increase your win rate, but you will in the long term become a better player, which also increases your win rate. Yeah. So ideally you wanna try out every single game to the best of your abilities. Now you're human, so you can't do that, but you wanna come as close to it again. So we, we want this not to happen. If you get tilted so you cannot play, that means you're not in a good shape to play. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's quickly maybe like just 
check in some other games just to see what's happening. I don't know if there are any gin games you can find. Probably uh, not. yeah, the one this year is expired. It's been too long then. Yeah, we're just gonna pop into like one of these and see what's up quickly. Just to see a little bit of variance, you know, so we don't get the sample from one thing and. Yeah. Doesn't try harding a lost game might tilt you more even. Uh, maybe, but that assumes that you know what is a lost game. That assumes that you know what is 100% a lost game. Yeah, I shouldn't give up like a uh, halfway game because I've had games where um, we do really badly early and then suddenly the enemy seems to throw the game and then we win really well. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, a lot of the games will be just won because enemies are trolling. And then when the game's over and we won, the enemy team is like, report this guy, report this guy. <laughs> yeah, classic. I mean, that, that's all. Like, I talked about this before. Solk is a marathon. It's not a sprint. The best average performance climbs, not the best peak. Like, you can play like Faker, literally, one game. But that game might have been won already by a coin flip, that your team was just simply better. So that yeah. performance literally means nothing at the end of the day. It doesn't really matter if you play one game as Faker, if next game you get tilted and play like a bronze player, you know? Yeah. So the best way is to, to be a consistent, on average player to climb. Because it, it is a marathon at the end of the day. I... I I think I show a graph in my Ultimate League of Legends guide on how it works. I can draw it in paint if you want. But basically the best way to improve is to fix your weakest points instead of your highest points. Because to gain one extra percentage on your peak performance is a tall order. It's a very difficult thing to do in anything you do in life. If you want to become slightly better at the thing you're really good at, it's horribly difficult. But it's very easy to become slightly better at the thing you're horrible at. So it's a lot easier to improve your... your bad your 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 lowest point you know yeah that makes sense yeah. yeah exactly so that's how you build that that's the best way to improve statistics and that's how you improve uh, on average wow the amount of flashes that's not even worth it wait that's not even worth it i don't think so they did four fucking flashes and he almost lived is this your duo no 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 i don't i never duo I think this game, uh, Falcons gives two, kill, two uh, deaths, uh, well, two kills really early to the enemy team. This but is I intriguing. Don't, you got a I random Vulcus. I don't let it get to me, and then we end up really doing really well. Nice, because this is a really good lane. This is a really good lane. And what they did by thro throwing both flashes, they, they just lost all the potential to kill you. You know, even though she got a first blood, it's not huge because she can't. She shouldn't be able to kill you with no flashes. Oh, so he face checks here yeah. and then he dies. Okay, I see. He should have been a bit closer, but oh, <laughs> oh I, you could have picked that up actually and saved him. He just got really worried because Kalista is more of an early champion, I think. Yeah, uh, she's just she's a terrible solo queue champ. She falls off like crap. It doesn't really matter. <clears throat> it doesn't really matter if she gets strong. Like, you, you got a really good comp here. The only way you lose is by getting hooked. That's it. That's the only way you lose this. So you play for poke until, until you're ahead. That's it. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so you're letting it come to you, which is smart. It's fine. It's really awkward seeing Vulcus support. He's running barrier, but he's running kind of... Ultimate Hunter instead of Speedy Boy. Interesting. Okay, he's not helping you farm. Nice. Classic, classic AFK support. He's playing Enchanter Vulcus, I guess. He's not even helping you farm. <laughs> Damn. But yeah, again, like th th this is like a good practice of what they can do. You know, you just have to imagine a hook flying out of the brush all the time. And you're instinctively holding the le left side and just farming, which is exactly how you should do it. Until they show their hand, exactly like this, and then you can be in lane. Perfect. Yeah, 
Yeah, this this seems all right. Oh man, you all coziest. <laughs> But yeah, what happens here is level 6, you just have to, like, what, what's your goal at level 6? What's my goal at level 6? Yeah. Uh, wait for them to make a mistake and then ult. Well, I, I guess, I don't know. Okay, what constitutes as a mistake? Sorry? What constitutes a mistake in this, uh, in this case? Mistake, yeah. Okay, perfect, yeah, exactly. There, there are two things that can happen. Blitz can be offset from AD carry, it can be a little bit far away, and Kalista is pushing a bit forward. And then you instantly ult Kalista and kill her. She dies 100 to 0. She has no counterplay if you press ult. Yeah. Okay? Or Blitzcrank goes in and misses a hook, then you can play a bit more aggressive, then you land ult on her, then you kill her. Yeah. Okay, perfect, you know. Uh, we don't ult Blitzcrank because she can just pull him. That's just a waste, not a good trade for you, because your ult is more valuable than hers. <clears throat> okay, that's perfect. I like that. I, li I like when players have a plan, you know? And that that's all, all you want to aspire to do in all of your games. You always want to have a plan. Um, the, the basic way is how, pl how plans work is even a worse plan, even a bad plan, is better than no plan. Because you want to have an idea of what you want to do, even if that idea might be wrong. Why is that? Is because, let's say you don't have an idea, you're just flowing through the game, doing random shit that happens. Something goes good for you, okay, good, you learn nothing. Something goes bad for you, you learn nothing, because you didn't do consciously anything, okay? But if you consciously have an idea, oh, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna wait out Bliss Hook, then we're gonna ult Kalista, and that works, now you know, because you consciously went for that plan and you got a kill out of it, you can put a little check mark in your head through empirical data, you learn, okay, this play I did once and it worked in this scenario. And that gives you more data to be abstracted and later on you can learn more from it. So you just know what to do in that situation when it happens again. Whereas if you have a bad plan, you, you enact it and, oh shit, that was a dumbass plan, we died, you know? But you unambiguously know that it was a bad plan. So now you can, by personal el elimination, remove it and then learn from it. Yes. So consciously doing things is very good. Having a plan, very good. It's extremely good in terms of climbing and learning. Whereas just being like a guy floating through the game, not, not doing anything, you know? Yeah. So this is good. Nice, he missed it, now he gives you time to operate in the wave, now you're going to push. Perfect. Okay. Like, Blitzcrank is a very uh, one-dimensional character, so it's very easy to kind of know what his plan is and how to play against it, you know? Yeah, exactly. So you're doing that pretty damn well here. Leona is a bit shiftier, especially paired up with Draven. Uh, but yeah, this is perfect. Yeah, exactly. Like, you wait out a hook, then you punish him. Even without level 6 context, this makes sense. You wait out a hook, then you trade. He throws a hook like a monkey, you trade, you push, you trade, you push. You gain access to the wave, you win the trades because you're better at poke. This is exactly how you win the situation. I mean, that's kind of easy. Uh, when I play against Blitz or uh, Alistar or uh, Trash, yep. then I always have in mind that they can just jump on your hook here. And yeah, if they exactly. miss that, if they miss that, then they're basically useless for yep. a couple seconds. Yeah, exactly. It's very good stuff. Like Thresh has a little bit more nuanced threats, like Flash, Lantern, Flay, and he's just gonna get a jungler in, and you kind of lose. But yeah, reasonable. You can fight this. That was really well played by Velkus. You execute one guy. Fight, 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 fight. Could afford that a bit. You still have heal to maneuver. Yeah, okay. Now they they had they started this lane with two kills and you guys still won. Do you know why that happened? Um, we controlled the lane better than they did. Yes, no? they played like crap and they never used their gold. Like she's ahead of you in gold by 500 still. But oh, it's irrelevant yeah. because she never recalled. She got the first blood, never recalled. 
Sorry, didn't pay attention to that. She should have recalled and bought, bought an item. Exactly. She never used the advantage. So that first bot, it was absolutely meaningless. Up until this point. Up until she buys, finally. And yeah, she gets sent to base like that. Yeah. So yeah, now you crash the wave and you can recall. And now you caught up fully. Now you're you're kind of you're dead equal in the bot lane. And you got over the early annoying hump because against Blur King it's just you're afraid of the early flips. Post six you're kind of safe. That's just overextending for this guy no reason. You you shove and recall you got a plate perfect. Okay, this is great. This is great stuff. Here. See, Dirk with a tear. I like that you picked up tear earlier here. Uh, it also helps you deal with the waves if you can't reach them due to Blushkin. You can clear, you can clip the minions with the EQ. What do you lose? Uh, this is Silver 1. Yeah. Okay. Kane goes aggro. Uh, he's con contesting the crab, and you guys don't really have prior because you recall mid laner died. It's a classic jungler mistake, whatever. Um, now, this is the same situation we had like from last game. They're on a dragon, what do you do? You want a hard shove. Because if you let them come, then they can look you out of the game because they have 3v2 potential. So yeah, we shoved it in to, to make them act on it. Okay, recall. Recall. Uh, yeah, you can't really get boots. There's nothing to be gained from a recall here, so. Whatever. Yeah, they played really well. It didn't feel silver at all in terms of like, in terms of uh, game knowledge and the ideas. They played really, really well. Okay, this is a good. That's a good plate. Like you, you, you realize this guy is very low, and you can you can kind of press press on and get that advantage. Now Kalista DC'd, so that's kind of you don't know that happened. So now you have to respect the possibility of her in the king because your team just made a play in the mid lane and came stop side. Um, this is a. Uh, do you know about the mirror play? Uh, this is also a great thing to know, basically whatever any role you're, you're playing. Um, so ideally in a game you want to know where everyone is at every single moment and what lane they can impact. Now that's fairly complex, because we have tiny shit human brains. Um, so you use shorthands, you can use basic numbers and just positionings. Okay, if you look at the map here, right, you look at the map, your guy's here, your guy's top lane merely diving and your guys invading top side. Okay, what does this tell us? Uh, that means their jungler is probably bot side. Exactly, exactly. Um, it's just a basic mirror play rule. If if your team is making a very deep play and it's not being countered, if this guy is invading here or if he's diving top lane, he's not in the bot side, which is a thing we have to note so you have you're investing a resource to top side so that means you don't make a play in bot side if they're making a play top side you don't make a play bot side this is what pro players do very very efficiently like they they plan these plays and they make a play on one side that's a strong side they don't take two fights at one time because they'll be counterproductive they're taking a fight on the side that they want and then what happens is opponents are going to make a mirror play if they are not in position to counter this, that means they're making a mirror play. So right now, if Kalista was here, like they would gank you. Wukong and Kalista would come in and 3v2 you. So this is where you can't make a play because your team is making a play. It requires discipline and patience and relies on uh, trust. That you're trusting your teammates will utilize the advantage. Okay? Because th this is called playing the weak side. If you're, you're playing 2v3, well, they're playing 3v2. So you have to trust that the, your 3v2 will be better. And how do you make, make sure that happens? Is you do not die in the weak side and hope your team wins on the strong side. So that's basically the mirror play. It, it's, it's a good good rule, you know. Just quick glance at the map will tell you should you play aggressive or not. Love that. Thank you. 
Why is it not valid to think Wukong might be top size since Trin is pushed? Because he's not. If Trin is pushed like this, and Wukong is not countering it, or if he's not countering this guy stealing his entire jungle, Wukong is not top side. Okay? Yeah. That's why, Chad. That's why. If like, Because a good jungler will, will liberate this pressure. He will either contest this or this. Okay? If he's not doing that, then he's either AFK, he's rage quitting, or he's in the bottom side. So you always expect him. Like, he might, like, look, I'm not gonna lie to you. There will be situations where a random fucking jungler will be preparing a lane gank here. Because he's a dumbass. He'll be preparing a random ass lane gank. But it's such a low percent play that you have to expect that he's on the opposite side. So only when you see him, you, you act. That's a good play by Vokas. Shit, this guy knows Vokas actually. He kind of trolled early, but he's playing clean. He's playing clean. Oh, God, he's his back. Yeah, and uh, now you guys are, if you overstay, you're gonna get punished. Uh, you're yeah. pushing a fourth uh, plate at nine minutes, and everyone is unaccounted for because your team is just dancing all over top side. Okay, you don't have flash, though, you're a big target. <clears throat> so yeah, that's just not respecting the mirror play and getting punished for it. Um, why did you die? Because you wanted to get one extra plate. Now, there's no real panic to get the plate. Uh, it's 10 minutes. You'll have way more time to operate. Pushing a fourth plate as two characters without Herald or like just two guys, it takes too long. It takes too much time. You'd be better using, utilizing that time to recall and get items. Especially if the, the, the side of the map is unfavorable. So you basically traded 160 gold for a comeback kill for them. Which is not good because you guys are ahead. Even if you traded equally, if you got two plates out of greed and they got one kill, it's 300 gold apiece. Which is not worth if you're ahead. Uh, that's gold relativism. Um, basically, if, you, if you're ahead, the gold it doesn't have the same value. Do, do you know about that concept? No, I've, I haven't heard of it yet. Um, basically, if if you're at 20,000 gold as a team, and they're at 15, trading 300 for 300 is bad. It's simple, because when you just... Like, let's say it's 15,000 gold to 20,000 gold. That in competitive is game over. Yeah. But if you have 55,000 gold versus 60,000 gold, it's a really close game. Well, it's kind of close. Depends on the dragons and all that shit. And the comps. But you get what I mean. The gold loses... The difference of gold loses value the further it goes. That's the point. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, because early like early game advantages can, can be huge, even though it's like... Like, even though it's, like, it's 3,000 gold, it can be huge. But in late yeah. game, they're meaningless. So the whole idea is if you're a losing team, you want to trade, you want to scale. If you're a winning team, you want to be clean and you don't want to give enemies anything. So silly trades are not good. Okay, uh, do you have any questions? I think we just went over like base every basic concept for solo queue, honestly. As good punish, Velka zone her into your role. Beautiful. Yeah, they didn't respect your return return time. Yeah, that's great. That's a bit unnecessary for the uh, bit of a random play. But yeah. Uh, I think we went over a lot of shit. Yeah. Uh, do you have any, any uh, direct questions? Like, that you're interested, that we didn't cover? I don't want to really overwhelm you, and uh, we did quite a lot of things, and this will be also in past broadcast for like next two months, if you want to rewatch it, if you went too fast, if you went over certain things, and you can always ask me and DM me, like if you have an interesting question. Okay. Uh, right, well, right now I don't have any questions. I Nothing? Think. Not directly, well, you covered a lot. Okay. So, 
Yeah, so um, just to keep in mind, keep keep like the basic ideas, basic ideas in your head, and just to optimize your mentality to, to play, to play a couple of games at a time. I think yeah. that will be your biggest elo winner for you, because if if you're a tilter, that usually tends to fix players the most, because it's the yeah, big I... thing holding them back. Because like just looking at your OPGG, it's like you get a lot of MVPs, a lot of aces. Like you play well. It just feels I, like you get emotional. I, I tilt easily, yeah. Yeah. That will probably net you the most LP in the short term getting fixed. But yeah, keeping these principles in mind, developing discipline and just slowly but surely playing and getting better is... is Because like if, if you fix yourself now as a... If you turn yourself into a robot, your ELO will climb, but it's going to stop at one point because you hit your peak again. And for that, you need to improve your playstyle, not just your emotions. So you got to work on both to, to create ideal progress, I guess. Uh, I did have a question about mid lane, actually. Yep, shoot. Since uh, mid lane is such a short lane, Okay. Um, how do you manage the wave in mid lane? Uh, I tend to think since the lane is so short, you just push constantly and when it's pushed too much you just uh roam for okay. either vision or for a kill in a side lane that's is that a yeah that's good a, idea or that's a very um robust because that, that's a loaded question because there, there's just how do you manage waves in mid lane it, it's it's a bit of a broad topic but that's actually good reasoning that's a very good uh reasoning for silver gameplay like lane is short which means it's very easy and painless to shove it. And very often you can. And that's the whole trick. Now, I think, was it last game that we stomped? Yeah, I went 8 one, one versus Orianna. I had Pryo all the time. Because I was stronger than her, I could shove out every wave before she could. Which means I get to operate on the map while she doesn't. So that's Pryo. And idea is... The, mid lane is deceptively simple in that regard. You want to do that, like everyone knows. You want to get prior and then play on the map. Because not only are mid laners very skill shot oriented as well. Which means if you're pushing enemies, they're going to struggle farming while you poke them and make them dance. You know, you're shooting on, at their feet. So they're, they're yeah. going to get less minions and you either poke or you, you ward the sides or you roam and create pressure on the crabs or whatever. So prior is good. Everyone knows that. Lane short, prio good. The thing is, good mid laners won't let you get prio. So it's going to be contesting it. And now there's there's some wave management tricks there on how do you deal with a lane where you cannot get prio naturally if enemy has a counter to you or a stronger laner at the moment. You know? So it can, it can get rather complex. But yeah, that's a, that's a good general idea. Try to, try to pressure, shove, roam. Perfect, actually, yeah. That's the gist of it. Uh, another question. Yep. Uh, about top lane, actually. Okay. Um, I've heard several different um, ideas about playing a bruiser in top lane, for example, Darius. Okay. Uh, not including Nasus, since he's a pure uh, split pushing champion, mostly. Yeah, Nasus playstyle, I, I don't know. It's kind of weird. For example, bruises like, uh, well, like I said, Darius. I hear some people say in low elo, always be with your team to pick up kills. Not necessarily. And then I hear some people, like, as a top laner, are always split push on the opposite side. of. Yeah, this is extremely subjective. It comes to decision making in a moment, in the heat of a moment. And for that, you have to understand win conditions. Like, um, let's say you're Trindamir. Like you're, like, there's there's a lot of things here again. Uh, if you're a Trindamir, uh, you gotta think about your value. Your value in a side lane is like 300%. Your value in a team fight is like 40%. As a Trindamir, you're shit in team fights. So if possible, you wanna avoid them. Your ideal scenario is split pushing. But there are certain cases where you must roam. And if it harms your win condition horribly. Like, let's say you're, everyone on the enemy team is low and they're diving your team deep. Of course, they're going to come and punish. But ideally, you want enemies to come and focus you. 
you, you want to be on a side lane threatening something, so they send multiple resources. They send two, three guys, and then you pull them away, so your team wins on the map 4v2. Yeah. Thing is, when uh, also lately I've been playing quite some Cho'Gath. Yep. Just pure, pure Cho'Gath tank. is a bit of a more team fight oriented character. Yeah. Yeah, since you need to be frontline for your team, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. If if like you're the initiator very often, and a good team fight will start with you like running forward and knocking someone up, and yeah, that yeah. should be a that should constitute a good team fight for you. So yeah, and you're not really like a threatening, destroying turrets really fast because you're not auto attacking fast, and you know, it's like yeah. again that that comes to the value terms. And Cho'Gath in lane is pretty much same value in team fight. You know, you're you're not you're not killing your own champion by putting yourself in a team fight. In fact, you want to be there for your team. Like yeah, Nar is versatile. Nar can do both. Riven can do both, but. Riven is flashy for a team fight, you kind of want to have flash and stuff like that. It comes down to, again, individual assessment and situations and there's no shorthand where you're going to have one rule and do that all the time and you're always going to do that. That's what makes great players great, understanding the nuance in very different positions because League has infinite amount of variables. Not a single game will ever be the same. So, yeah, yeah you can just make your best guess and, and act and, and then see if, if it works or not. And just try to draw conclusions from that on. Does it make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. Is it... Well, I don't have any more okay, questions. Okay, we're out. It's not my turning head. anymore, yeah. Okay. But cool. uh, this was a really good session. Uh, I, 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 I don't know yeah. if you saw in chat, I had a session with a guy once. And basically, it wasn't cheap either okay but he he just made me watch him play some games in low <laughs> while, while he's in diamond and he's like you should definitely play Ire irelia because she's really good and play nothing else and just do like i do so i watched him play like three games one, one trick coach okay <laughs> and then i 1v1 him just so he could see if i was good at punishing uh, his mistakes and that's it. Yeah, reasonable I exercise, but that's very deep. Any, yeah. I barely learned anything out of... <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah, I hope this was slightly better than it and a bit more productive. It was way better. Um, yeah, like, I, I used to coach, like, since 2015 and 16, and very often I would go into meta game and mentality, and it's... It's the biggest part, because in order to... Like, you have to orient your, yourself properly. I also use that analogy in my ultimate guide, is, like... If you if you aim, uh, it's kind of hard without visual shit. But uh, anyway, like the better you you set your aim at the start, the faster you're gonna learn. You know, because you're, you're thinking down the line. You're thinking hundred games down the line how you're gonna be a better player as well, not just how I'm gonna be better like tomorrow. Yeah. So you have to know what you want to aim for and kind of figure out the best way to learn. Because there are sloppy ways of learning. You can just play. Like, that's coaching. Coaching is essentially like a faster way to learn. You're doing a shortcut to an extent. Because you can literally just play the games like we did when we started in, like, season one. And for me to learn a concept, I had to play 500 games and just empirically draw my conclusions. Now you can kind of have watch analysis of, of higher ELO players. You, you, there's trickle-down economy where you just coaches teach challengers, challengers by solo queue, by the virtue of solo queue, teach grandmasters, they teach diamonds, and it trickles down and you learn some basic concepts just by playing the game slightly faster because there's more like pool of knowledge. This, people are not clueless. There's guys, there's all kinds of shit, and there's people to help you. So yeah. now you're what you're doing is doing a shorthand on how to learn and getting shortcuts. Obviously, you're going to have to play a bunch of games to feel it because like, online learning is a weird thing and it doesn't really go well unless you try it out and enact it so yeah for sure yeah yeah uh what i found out the best is when i start doing coaching with people is to go over some basic principles basic concepts and depending on their elo kind of tailor it again i here i didn't want to go too much into wave management even though i did kind of because it's a huge part of the game but again i find it can be overwhelming to not like if only if you're diamond, you go into like trading patterns on based off of one minion and shit like that when you go higher. But yeah, yeah. Anyway, I hope it helped in any capacity. Yeah, definitely.
yeah I'll, I'll probably post this on youtube so you guys can can watch it if that's fine with you you can re-watch it i can either make it unlisted or, or just for you or public for people i don't know i mean, I, I don't mind uh, either way okay cool. like uh, kitten said in chat this is good about having you coach me because i can just re-watch this if i need a refresher yeah yeah exactly so yeah, that, that's that's perfect.